We have just passed 100 days of protests stemming from the death of George Floyd. This isn't an easy topic to address because I know it's so polarized. Nevertheless, it's time for some roasted opinions. So far, we've racked up billions of dollars in property damage, thousands of businesses closed temporarily and hundreds closed permanently, hundreds of thousands of jobs disappearing as consumer confidence tanks in the affected areas, over 14,000 arrests made, hundreds if not thousands injured, and over 30 people killed. At the same time, we're seeing report after report of how these protests are mostly peaceful sometimes even while buildings burn out of control in the background behind the reporter. We're hearing state and local officials refuse federal intervention to restore peace right before another protest-related shooting. We're seeing cities permit the painting of political slogans in support of the protests on public streets while widespread destruction of public property is happening just down the block. This year has been a freaking doozy, hasn't it? This is going to be one of those years that historians will study for generations. There's been so much upheaval that some things just aren't going to go back to normal. The world experiences years like this sometimes. 2001 is easy to remember, but there was also 1960, 1941, 1929, and many others which happened outside of living memory, like 1776 and 1492. These are the years that the world changed, and many historians build entire careers out of studying how the world changed and arguing whether those changes were good, bad, or just different. We aren't discussing historical facts during this episode. I'm taking off my historian's mortarboard and putting on my pundit's ball cap. There will be no attempts to foster discussion with both sides of the issue. The time for discussion is over for the time being. These protests have been called an attempt to raise awareness, but that's not an accurate assessment. They are riots, and have been since the beginning. There's little about them that is peaceful, and they need to stop. There have now been protests in over 2,000 cities all across the United States because of police-involved shootings this year. Many of these protests have started out as peaceful demonstrations, from which I believe that outlets like CNN derive their narrative that the protests are largely peaceful. Some have concluded without incident as well, other than the occasional dust-up that occurs every time that protesters and counter-protesters encounter one another. But nearly every state in the U.S. has now had at least one night that ended in vandalism, rioting, looting, arson, assault, and even murder. By and large, the physical assaults are between rioters and counter-protesters, but in many cases, the victims of assaults are just random people. The businesses smashed, looted, and burned down are owned by people who were either not involved in the protests or who have shown support for the protests. Public and private property has been destroyed or damaged based on events that happened in other cities. People are beginning to leave these cities, and yet the leaders of these cities are considering slashing police budgets and even disbanding their current police forces entirely. The president denounces the violence and either offers or threatens to send in federal forces to end the rioting and restore order, depending on what day it is. Yet many governors and mayors are responding that the president doesn't have the authority to send in the feds to put a stop to things, and then indicate that they don't want him there. Ted Wheeler, in particular, doesn't want federal assistance, yet blames Trump for the rioting. You can't have it both ways, Ted. This is ridiculous. All this has to do not with the police-involved deaths of citizens, but with the election. Oh yeah, there's a presidential election this year, remember? Never waste a crisis seems to be the order of the day, and the international crisis that is COVID-19 is being exploited to screw with the economy, which was strong before COVID-19 showed up. The riots are further exacerbating this crisis by ruining small businesses. Yes, I know that big chain stores have been hit by COVID-related shutdowns and protest-related damage, but big chains typically withstand such events much better than small businesses can hope to do because they have more cash reserves and more borrowing room to keep things going until business picks back up. Many small businesses are sole proprietors, which means that the net income from the business is the gross personal income for the business owner. Shut down a big chain store for a few months and they still stand a decent chance of reopening. 
shut down a locally owned store for the same time period, and the owner will likely have to declare bankruptcy and close forever. Anyone with eyes can see these effects. Why, for the love of all that's holy, would anyone want to make things worse? Because the orange man is bad. That's why. Some people actually believe that the president is responsible for the spread of COVID-19 and the more than 100,000 COVID-related deaths in the country, conveniently forgetting that COVID-19 is spreading just as fast in countries which entered immediate and total lockdowns. Some people actually believe that their neighborhoods are falling apart because of what Donald Trump did in the last four years, conveniently ignoring the fact that those neighborhoods were slowly falling apart for several decades before his inauguration, and that the cities in question are run by Democratic elected officials. The facts don't match the narrative, so why blame Trump? Because he's Trump. He's a relatively new politician, an outsider when it comes to Washington, and he's doing things that experienced politicians and lifelong federal bureaucrats would never have done. Yes, he's taken days off and gone on vacation in other states. So did Obama. So did both Bushes. So did Clinton. So did Reagan. So did every other president for the last century, at least. He's campaigned for re-election throughout his term. So does everyone else who's elected to the Oval Office and plans to stay past their current term. He's made unpopular policy decisions, including military deployments. So did every other occupant of the office up to and including George Washington. The only possible exception to all of these unpopular decision traps is William Henry Harrison, who spent most of the 31 days of his presidency dying of pneumonia. Presidents do these things. Making a major issue of taking some time off, campaigning for re-election, and making decisions like what we've all seen the past four years is pointless, except in the context of election politics. Congress has repeatedly gone into recess when major legislation is up for debate. They've campaigned for re-election with every press conference. And yes, they've passed legislation which has been controversial at best and destabilizing at worst. Is anyone protesting Congress? Um, no. Just... No. How about Adam Schiff, who wants to investigate Trump over every article printed by papers owned by Biden donors? Andrew Cuomo, who tells us that Trump needs an army to come visit New York State? Nancy Pelosi, who believes that a hair salon owner set her up when Nancy violated California state law on masking and distancing to get a wash and blowout? Chuck Schumer, who acts as if Mitch McConnell needs his permission to set the legislative agenda when Mitch is the Senate Majority Leader and Chuck leads the minority party in the Senate. How about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the rest of the squad, who act as if they have personal control over the House agenda and use their bully pulpit to accuse the President of doing everything but brushing his teeth? Congress has averaged a minus 40 approval rating for a long, long time. Who's protesting them for focusing on politics instead of passing legislation? Who's protesting the fact that they've held up the stimulus bill because Trump doesn't want to give the Postal Service tens of billions of dollars to fund mail-in voting? Or the fact that they're pretending that mailing out ballots to every name on the voter rolls without a request is the same thing as providing absentee ballots to people who requested one and confirmed their identity and information? No one because the media is too busy trying to influence the election in the DNC's favor to report the facts. Talking heads repeat hit pieces written with unconfirmed and unconfirmable sources as if they were breaking news. They cover for Biden's mistakes, spinning his statements as just stutter-related gaffes and not indications of his senility and long-standing policy positions. Stuttering might explain the repetitions, but it doesn't explain the incoherent positions or the inability to remember quotes from the Declaration of Independence. It doesn't explain dozing off during political events or frankly alarming amounts of inappropriate gestures during photo ops. It doesn't explain his repeated lapses during interviews or his inability to answer questions without a teleprompter. Donald Trump is an arrogant prick. No one's denying that. But Biden is unfit to be president. Trump pisses people off. Biden can't remember their names. Trump has lost money since he took office and donates his salary back to the government. Biden has a track record of cashing in on his office. Trump tells China off for their threatening behavior. Biden tells the U.S. that China isn't a threat while his son works for Chinese companies. Trump gets called a racist whenever he announces a new policy, despite increasing funding for historically black colleges and universities significantly and working to end unjust sentencing guidelines. 
Biden engages in blatant pandering in his campaign despite his long track record of racism and gets called the cure to Trump's racism. I tried to get us all talking about the issues so that we could discuss both sides for over two years now. And for two years, I haven't seen much of anyone interested in discussing both sides of anything. We need to get back to that, but until we stop trying to ruin the lives of people over differences of opinion, this channel won't present both sides of anything.